Myron Swiston uh, here again. Uh, just a couple of days I visited you and there's a few things uh, that have been bothering me I missed which I'm going to cover uh, quickly today. Um, one of the things uh, when you're driving around or looking around and people who are doing murals on buildings, uh, concrete, cinder block, masonry, uh, I noticed that they really degrade quickly. And some common means, like we've been doing with the solid supports uh, stretch canvas, could really make a mural after five years not disappear, but be as clear, as sparkling as the day that it was made. One of the things, uh, my suggestions, a uh, couple of suggestions on the front end and the back end, is to use the matte medium which contains silica on it, and it's a barrier uh, on the cinder blocks, on stucco, on concrete, to do your mural. It's a cost-effective uh, way of giving you the barrier and inhibiting the support-induced uh, discoloration, the migration from the concrete, the cinder block, into your mural and totally dis uh, discoloring uh, your mural after so many hours and so much work involved. Once you've finished this, you can, of course, after you've done your drawing and your, uh, could be a charcoal preliminary, uh, you could fix those, use acrylic or oil uh, on the product. There's a product, after your uh, painting is dry, you're gonna leave it, could be a week, could set up. Um, there's a mineral spirit acrylic uh, varnish that is, uh, uh, very strong against temperature differences, extreme cold, extreme hot, um, which has been proven out in the out in the field on the prairies, uh, where you have extremes in temperature, uh, minus and high pluses in Fahrenheit scale, uh, which will destroy most murals if they're not properly uh, using proper means uh, to paint these. Now. If you use those means and use the top coat, you could apply the top coat with uh, a brush or roller or, or even spray it. What that is doing, that's going to give you the UV protection as well as protection against physical abrasion by wind. And the other thing it does, of course, is provide uh, the protection uh, from rain and moisture on the surface and it'll just wipe off. So when it's minus 40 in the on the prairies with a howling wind and it's a hot 110 or more on your mural that you've painted, it will be just as crisp, as clean, as sparkling as the day that you did it. And then you're going to be asked to do more of these murals. I mean, you've spent a lot of time on these murals, hours and prep and negotiations. So it, it bodes well um, that you do the preliminary uh, matte medium you could also gesso these walls, but the matte medium itself could provide uh, sufficient barrier from the support-induced discoloration. And then your painting is really going to be whatever you content you put in it. At the end, when you finish your top coat, it's going to be jewel-like and crystal-like. And it'll be really nice to see. And after five years, it'll be just as nice and as beautiful as the day that you made it. The other day, I also, maybe I wasn't clear in it, um, about differences between stretchers and strainers. And this is a strainer. And the thing with strainers is that they're butted against each other like this. Okay, they're butted against each other. They do not have like a stretcher, a tongue and groove, which marries the two pieces of wood uh, together. In order to get a strainer to look like this and to stay together, you have to use these triangulated pieces on corners, sides. And as you can see, the whole back has got these triangles to keep this very small 16 by 20 uh, strainer together. As well, because they're not being married, they're butted. So on the corners, okay, on the end here, you can see there's some uh, nail marks here, okay, and then you're going to probably have to do um, some gluing in here to get it fixed. 
and to, and to stabilize it so that it's joined uh, together to make a solid piece. Now with the stretchers, of course, they are tongue and groove. They go together like so. They all just slide together. Here's the tongue, there's your groove, and they wiggle together very easily. And so you have this inherent strength uh, together of the tongue and, tongue and groove. So that's a stretcher. The previous one was a strainer. So that gives you some uh, real differences uh, there. As well, um, on the masonite, on the prep, on the masonite, um, yes, the masonite should be primed on the back as well as the front to give it stability on both ends. So that when it's curing here, uh, we're not doing any dimensional distortion here by only painting on the one side. So the gesso is going to be applied to whatever, it's going to be on both surfaces, three times on both uh, surfaces. It's going to give you that um, flexible uh, support on masonite uh, that you need. Uh, the other thing, um, all these uh, materials and so on, there's no secrets to it. Um, to these materials and how they're put together. Uh, if someone has a secret, um, it isn't really a secret because they're only keeping it <laughs> to themselves and not sharing it. And we can only grow by what we uh, share um, with each other. I'm uh, just prepping now uh, for canvas stretching uh, with stretchers, uh, I'm going to talk about the canvas, uh, squareness of the canvas on the stretchers, um, and staples, uh, cornering, and so on, folding on the corners. Thank you again um, for listening and joining me with the discovery on the materials. Um, as we go along down the road, I'm going to skip a stone and throw a stone out. I'm going to be talking, um, as we finish up with the materials, we're going to go on to abstraction. We're going to do perhaps some introductory history, uh, surface, uh, and so on. Uh, but we have a lot before us, and it'll be a journey uh, that I have and I want to share with others, and they can have participate in this journey. Uh, bye for now. Talk to you soon.